Hey everybody, I hope you're having a great afternoon. Today is Thursday, May the 14th, 2020. I'm coming to you here live from Atlanta with Pandemic hair and all. Um, this is the April market recap for the Atlanta market with data from the Atlanta Board of Realtors, as well as some of our national partners. I hope everybody out there is safe and healthy right now and carefully moving forward towards their normal lives re resuming soon. It's certainly a different world these days, but the good news is that in general, real estate has held up amazingly well in the current environment. You know, I just had the privilege of being on a Zoom call with the legendary Mike Perry today, uh, who talked with agents who talks with agents from around the country and the world on a regular basis. And it was very interesting to hear what Mike had to say. Um, if you'd like to hear more about this or the nationwide perspective, of course, please feel free to DM or call me. Uh, I'd love to share the insights Mike with his 57 plus years of, of real estate experience has. It was quite impressive. Um, that being sa said, I'd like to share with you the latest data to keep you informed as always on the Atlanta real estate market. So I'm going to share my screen with you here uh, real quick and run through some of the statistical data of what we're seeing in our marketplace right this minute. All right. So what you're seeing here is the the recap for April 20 from the Atlanta Board of Realtors. Um, and it gives a basic synopsis of what happened in the real estate market in the month of April. We had 11,994 active listings. We had 4,071 unit sales. The average uh, price was 366,000 with 3,716 new listings. That gives us only a 2.4 month supply. That is still a very short supply of inventory in the marketplace. Uh, median prices uh, were right around $305,000. And it's interesting when you look at the sales, <clears throat> when you look at the sales, we had 4,071 total sales. And that's, uh, that is a 25.8% decrease from 2019. And what we've seen here in the marketplace is we've seen speculative buyers and sellers sort of step out uh, of the marketplace and not, you know, the people who aren't really, really interested are kind of getting out of the, out of the way for the moment. Um, and we've seen that pretty regularly across the market. And we're seeing it both on the buyer and the seller side. So the supply and demand has stayed relatively the same and very strong in the marketplace. Um, we fully expect all those players to come back into the market once things resume to a more of a normal pace. Uh, but if you look, like I say, at our total uh, monthly sales, it is down from the 2019 number when everything was in gangbusters for the spring market. But take a look at this. Look at the median sales price of homes. It's actually up 8.9% from 2019. So yeah, there's not as many people buying and selling in the marketplace right this minute, but those who are buying and selling are doing so at an 8.9% increase over last year. So the supply and demand have relatively the same, uh, made the same change uh, to keep the market in a very stable position. I know you guys are seeing the stock market do this crazy number all over the place right now. And it's very reassuring, uh, even, I mean, you, plus we're, we're looking at crazy unemployment numbers, we're looking at all of these really bad news, but then you look at real estate and you see, wow, it's actually staying stable, not only staying stable, but increasing from the previous year. So it's, it's been a great staple in the economy right now. Our average sales price likewise has still increased 5.5% from 2019. Very strong indicator in the real estate market. We're not seeing any of the things that we saw in the 2000, 2008 marketplace where people were speculating on empty homes, um, in, you know, crazy financing numbers. We're not seeing any of those things. So we're very encouraged with, with what's going on in the marketplace. It, it, it seems like a very strong and stable environment. I mean, let's face it, a lot of us are staying in our homes a lot more right now. So it's become probably the most important investment that you'll ever make. Let's take a look here at our month supply. Now we did see the month supply drop down and normally in March and April, we see that things jump way up uh, because that's our spring market. You look back at the previous year, um, 19, uh, in 2019, you saw it jump, 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 jump uh, up into the summer months. And we saw it drop down in February or at the end of February because people were basically taking a, a, a stance of, of stepping away from the market and, and quarantining themselves. And we're starting to see that uh, go back up again. It was interesting to look at uh, the showing time showings. We had seen a sharp decline in those uh, coming into the month of April, but coming out of the month of April, we're seeing that number go way back up. And in the last week, we've really seen that jump tremendously. Now things are starting to open up 
here in the Georgia marketplace. Of course, everybody is still being very, very careful with showings following all the CDC guidelines. You know, we take our, our hand sanitizers, our gloves, our masks, and we're very, very careful. We try not to touch people's homes and be very respectful both on both sides as the buyers and the sellers. So it's a really different world. We're doing a lot of virtual showing. So if you do have homes that you wanna look at, we can show those to you right here from our computer and save you a ton of time and probably put you in the perfect home. Um, one thing we are seeing more of now is multiple offers again, because there is a little bit more of a limited supply um, and we still have about the same number of buyers. So, so we're seeing people do that a little bit more than we have seen in the past. Um, but if you look at this, um, we, we see a 32.2% decrease in listings from 2019. Now that's a huge drop, but that is totally relative to the pandemic. You look at how the market went up in January, or how, how strong it was in January and February, uh, and then towards the end of February, it started to drop off. We even saw an uptick in March. So there, there's been a lot of interesting activity in the listings. But like I say, you're seeing sort of the same thing with the buyers, the people who weren't quite as serious. They're not out there um, uh, looking for homes like they were uh, in January when, when everybody felt like it was very safe. Uh, of course, as we expect, our listings have decreased 13.4% uh, uh, in the month of uh, April. I'm starting to see that that number change pretty quickly in May. Uh, we've had a really fast track month coming into the first week, week of May. People are starting to get out and look at homes. Um, occupied homes are starting to show a little bit now. So it's, it's real difference and change in what we're seeing. I think we're gonna see that continue to change as long as we're all still safe and careful and healthy about our choices and how we're handling things in the marketplace. Um, you know, everybody's big question right now though is when is the economy going to recover? And that is a very good question. We, we look at uh, national statistics and our national partners on a regular basis to, to see what their thoughts are on this. Everybody I think has heard by now, we're looking at a V-shaped recovery. Um, this is a situation much like we saw um, in the uh, year 2000, after we saw 9-11, we had a sudden impact that really shot the market down. But then when everything changed and got back to normal, things recovered in a very, very, very fast fashion. All the top uh, uh, financial companies seem to think the same thing. Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, uh, Morgan Stanley, Wells Fargo, they're all projecting pretty much the same uh, sort of concept as we go in towards the end of the year. If you look at what Sam Cotter, he's the chief economist at Freddie Mac says, he says, all of the uncertainty of the crisis means forecasts of economic activity are more unclear than usual. We expect that most of the economic damage from the virus will be contained to the first half of the year. Going forward, we should see a recovery starting in the second half of 2020. Guess what? Second half of 2020 is right around the corner. It's already the middle of May. We talk about another month and a half when we're in the second half of 2020. And most everybody that I talk to, and I talk to agents across the uh, country on a regular basis um, to find out what's going on in their marketplaces. And most everybody seems to think that, um, you know, once the market gets back to normal where people can get out and see their homes, there are going to be some isolated areas like New York and probably LA and some places like that where people aren't able to get out and about and see things as much, but they're expecting to see those people who were maybe a little bit more speculative, the ones that we saw step out of the marketplace completely in, um, in February uh, and in March, they're expecting to see those people come back to the marketplace, but you're going to see both buyers and sellers. So you're going to see a lot more supply and a lot more choice, but you'll also see a more, um, consistent level and a higher level of buyers that'll be looking for those homes. Uh, so, so we expect things to stay strong. Um, we expect there to be more inventory coming up. Now is maybe a fantastic time to sell because like I say, a lot of people are uh, experiencing multiple offers. Properties that look great, that are priced well, you know, that show well, they're really getting the, the right traction and, and getting uh, multiple offers in many of the cases. Uh, so if that's something that you might be interested in, it is important that you talk to somebody to help you best position your property right now. And of course, protect your family during this transitional period as we come back into our new normal. Um, CNBC recently said evidence is mounting that home buyers may be coming back to the market. I'm seeing this every single day in my office now. Uh, and of course it goes on to say after demand plummeted in the past month through the coronavirus. And I'm not kidding, you, I am seeing this every day now. We're seeing more and more people go through the listings 
Um, people are getting more comfortable. Um, vacant properties, of course, are getting tons of showings. Um, occupied properties are getting more showings. We're typically doing a virtual showing prior to the actual showing on the occupied properties to make sure that everybody's, uh, that this is really that something that somebody wants to see to keep our sellers in great shape and safe. And we're following the CDC guidelines and being extra careful to respect the privacy and the care of folks' homes that we go into, limiting the touching the thing, wearing the plastic gloves, um, having the face masks, uh, uh, not touching the doors. We're asking the sellers to leave all the lights on and the doors open. So it's, you know, basically a touchless showing, um, making it safer for everybody else. Um, interestingly enough, we look at the um, real estate showings in North America, and this is very similar to what we've been seeing in our showing time system over the last couple of months. We saw things start a nosedive at the first of March. And I mean, I'm not kidding you. They were jumping. We could, we saw traffic drop on properties like I've never seen in my lifetime. But then all of a sudden, look what happens right here at the 1st of May. I mean, I'm sorry, the 1st of April. Uh, it starts to come back up. And I have seen that regularly, steadily come up. And over the last week, we've seen it jump, probably in the biggest jump I've seen so far. Uh, taking a look at the percentage of home ownership equity, I'm going to move that just a little bit. Uh, it's interesting to see that uh, um, 42.1% of people own their home outright. 42.1% own their home outright. You heard that correctly. And uh, you've got 16.6% .6 of people that have 60 to 99% equity in it. And even beyond that, you've got 12.5% uh, that have 41 to 60% uh, equity in their homes. That's 58.7% of all homes in America. That's 58.7% of all homes in America have at least 60% equity. We have never seen that before in history. And that's one of the reasons that the real estate market is so stable. You know, back in 2007 and eight, we saw people with 110, 120% uh, loans basically on their properties that they didn't own, they didn't live in, they were speculating they were gonna go up on, um, you know, and then all of a sudden the music stopped and everybody who had no equity had no reason to stay. Um, we don't see that at all in the marketplace today, uh, which is one of the most encouraging reasons that we feel it's so strong and that we feel that the V-shaped recovery and that uh, the, the demand will peak up pretty quickly once this all changes. Um, here's a little bit about who's filing for unemployment. You notice we had the big spike, of course, at the end of March, 1st of April. It's starting to dwindle down a little bit, although there are still a lot of people out of work. Um, it's interesting, though, to see who those people are. The vast majority of them are servers and bartenders. Um, so you're talking about almost 40% of the people that have filed in that are in that category. So once we're able to get out, out and eat and support our local businesses, which please do get out and eat and so, uh, safely and follow the guidelines or get takeout, support your local businesses, support, support the little guys. They really need you guys right now. You know, if you're just going for a beer or whatever, or a takeout beer for that matter, get those guys a 20% tip or 25% tip. They really can use it right now. And it really will help us all in the marketplace um, and in our recovery as we go forward uh, in, the, in, in moving out of this crazy world of the pandemic. Um, so that being said, you know, let me give you sort of a recap on that. Um, we have here in Atlanta, we've seen more speculative buyers and sellers sort of bow out of the marketplace. Supply and demand have remained relatively stable because um, they're both about the same. They both dropped off somewhat in a similar amount. We have started to see some multiple offers on some of our sellers that are, have homes that are in really great shape, that show really well and price well. They're getting multiple offers and sometimes getting more than the list price. Um, so it's a great market and interesting in Atlanta. Of course, every market is different. Every market is local. So it's important that in your marketplace, you're talking to a local expert. And that is your April recap for the Atlanta real estate market. As always, I thank you for tuning in and I look forward to our next visit. Stay safe and stay healthy, my friends.